Hey guys, Luke here. In today's video, we're going to go through basically a general overview of kite surfing, how it works, you know, a little bit about the area, what you can look for, some terms you know just talking about the basics of kite surfing flight and really just like I said a, an overview that you can take to your first lesson so the purpose of this video isn't designed to substitute for a first lesson it's mainly just to give you some of the concept so that when you go and take your first lesson it's almost like a little bit of a revision uh, which is going to save you time and money during your first lesson because uh, there's a lot of new things that are learned when you are uh, you know, undertaking the skill of kite surfing. There's a lot of new terms and skills and, and you know, a lot of thinking about you know, all things. And so what that means is that it can be uh, a little bit confusing and, and time consuming when you're taking a lesson. So hopefully this video just gives you some of those basics so that you can take it there and you sort of think, oh yeah, I've seen that, I've heard that before, and, and they can build upon those skills and, and with a more comprehensive type lesson, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one with you standing there. So again, this isn't meant to substitute a lesson, okay? I don't want you to just think, okay, I watched this video and now I'm ready to go. It's definitely not that. It's just to give you some basic understanding. So, here we are, we're down on the beach, uh, and so we're in the Dominican Republic right now, and it's a really good location for kite surfing, and there's, you know, we're gonna go through this sort of area and, and uh, what it means. And so we've arrived on the beach today, and so first off, let's just go down to uh, some drier sand so I can just explain a little bit about how this works. The wind, is sort of hitting us in the face. So the first thing you do when you get down to the beach is you determine the wind direction. And you can determine the wind direction by sort of letting it sort of hit you in the face. And the, and the little rule is you can hear it in both ears. Like, so it, when you turn your head, you'll only hear it in one ear, but when you're sort of facing exactly the right direction, you'll, you should hear it in both ears. Or you can just basically feel it hitting you straight in the face, right? When you've determined that direction, it's good to draw a little line in the sand. So this is our wind direction, something like this today. Now there might be some other clues around that you could base it on. There's a flag there, you can see uh, the flag's flapping, that's going to be a really good indication. Uh, you can look for other things, you could throw a bit of dry sand in the air and see which way it goes. But really, find the wind direction, you know, this is what we want. Now, if we draw a line directly across that wind direction line, there's a couple of terms that are quite important with kite surfing and it's upwind and downwind. So from this line, basically what we're looking at is if we stand on this line and we face and we can still feel the wind on our face like this, everything from this line that way is upwind. Okay, so that's all upwind. Now if we were to turn around and the same thing, we're standing on the same line, and now the wind's at our back, then everything from this direction is downwind. Now, the reason that that is so important is that when we're flying a kite, if we're standing here on this line that we've drawn and we're flying the kite, we'll pretty much always have the wind at our back, meaning that we're sort of facing downwind like this, holding onto the kite, the kite's flying in the air. Now, the kite's flying in the air and there's wind particles rushing there, hitting it, Right? And just like anything else, if you were to release the kite, it would travel downwind. It would flow with the wind because the wind would push it down. Now, the reason that's so important for kite surfing is that this upwind downwind definition, when we're setting up and we're assessing our area, is that this downwind is basically what is going to you know, be most of the dangers that we're going to encounter. The kite isn't going to pull us upwind. So when we're holding onto the kite, it's not going to pull us up there. It's always going to pull us this direction. Now, why that's important is we want to make sure that we're setting up in an area or, or being in an area or managing ourselves, you know, away from anything that is really hard and, uh, you know, any obstacles that may be in this downwind area. So a few different obstacles that might be in that area. There might be people sitting right there. And if the kite was to crash or if we were to drag, then we might drag through them. There might be, you can see some of these walls, okay? There's a concrete wall there, there's trees, there's buildings, and it's all in this downwind area. So we wanna sort of bring ourselves far enough back that we're not gonna get dragged into that. Another term that we 
uh, you might hear in kite surfing, and it's important, is at the moment, we've got the beach coming down like this. This is sort of the line. This is the line of the beach. Now, like we've already determined, we've got a wind direction hitting us in the face like this, and the wind's sort of blowing this way. Okay? Now, there's a couple of different terms here for the wind direction, and it basically anything that blows from the ocean onto the shore, like this, is called onshore. So that's onshore wind. Anything that blows from the shore and off onto the ocean is called offshore. And one of the main reasons that this is important is when we're looking at the wind orientation for what we're going to be doing, kite surfing, there's some sort of safe winds and there's some more dangerous winds. The wind direction today is, you can see it's sort of blowing onshore, but it's not completely onshore. And that's because this wind direction, so blowing directly down the beach or from the other way is called cross shore. So today we've got cross onshore conditions. Now, cross onshore wind is sort of thought to be the safest wind condition for kite surfing. And the reason is that if you can imagine, if the wind was blowing this direction and we were gonna kite surf, what, what do you think that that would mean for us, right? And just talking about that sort of upwind and downwind, it would mean that if the wind's blowing this direction and we're standing here, then that's our downwind area. Now, if that's our downwind area and that's the way the kite wants to go naturally and something was to go wrong, then of course, we're just going to drag out into the ocean, uh, you know, forever. And so basically in kite surfing, anything, any direction, even like this, that blows offshore in some way is considered dangerous for kite surfing and you really should avoid it. Um, the only exceptions to that are sometimes on islands, you know, you might have a boat support or jet ski support or something that will come and get you. But even then there's still risks that, you know, the boat breaks down and, and something goes wrong or, or for whatever reason. So really we're looking for any onshore type conditions. Now, this directly onshore, if the wind was blowing straight onshore like this, you might consider this to be also safe. However, this particular wind direction also comes with its problems it's really always gonna make sure that it blows you back onto the beach, so that's great. You're always gonna end up back on the beach, but the problem is that you might accidentally end up back on the beach. And so when there's absolute onshore conditions, it, it, it creates two problems. One is it's hard to get out into the water, and two, if anything happens, you might end up on a you know more of a hard surface and back up into the buildings and things like that. So really, what we're looking for is this cross onshore condition. And if the wind was coming from here, Okay, same beach coming from that direction. It's exactly the same as this direction. Okay, so that's still cross onshore conditions. That's still safe kite surfing and it'll just be coming from that way. Okay, so I think um, one of the biggest things when you're getting into kite surfing too, and obviously if you're doing a lesson, you're going to go somewhere and they're going to you know, have a location for you. But one of the most important things is to look for other kite surfers. Go to your local area where there are other kite surfers, other people that are kite surfing, because they've likely determined the best condition in that area to kite surf. They've probably worked out you know, some of the hazards and some of the safety things, and you can ask them and, and really that's gonna help you as well. So again, what we're really looking for is wind that's blowing back onto the shore, but not directly onto the shore. This cross, offshore, cross onshore condition is going to allow us to go out and in a lot easily, which brings us to the next point of how kite surfing works, how we ride our kite surfing, uh, our kite. So if we stand back up and we've got this wind direction like this today, and we know that this is that cross that we drew before, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I love drawing crosses in the sand. But um, basically, when we're kite surfing, we sort of don't go everywhere. Kite surfers go across the wind. Okay, so that way, and this way, I've got the wind at my back, and I'll go across that way, and I'll go across that way. So I'll head out into the ocean, and then I'll come back in across the wind. And so that, again, is just you know, when we talk about that onshore condition, if the wind was blowing directly onshore, then we wouldn't be able to get out. You know, we'd be trying to get out that way and we'd be trying to get this way, but we'd be going across the wind and we'd just be keeping getting forced back onto the beach. So that's not really safe directly onshore. We're looking for that cross onshore condition. Okay, so now let's just go and talk 
that's just a little bit of, uh, you know, about uh, some of the terms. But when we're looking for our environment, there are a few different hazards that we might be uh, looking out for. Definitely buildings, anything downwind, definitely logs, rocks, anything that you might drag across. The kite is designed to pull you, okay? That's what that's the whole point of it. It pulls you along. It can generate a lot of power, a lot of speed. And so when you're on land, really important that you, you know, try and minimize those hazards, including other people that the kite might hit or the lines might wrap around or things like that. On top of that, you can also have wind shadows. So if there was a big building, if we look actually straight up the beach here, you can see there's a massive building up at the end. Now, if you were to tuck your kite right in behind that building, that would be considered a wind shadow where basically the wind is very turbulent, the building's you know, interrupting the wind a lot and the kite's not gonna fly very well. So we're also looking for a sort of a nice, clear, open area away from obstacles upwind. So if we remember our terms, that would be upwind. So no obstacles upwind and then so a nice clear flow of breeze and then no obstacles downwind and a bit of a golden rule is to sort of be at least three line lengths so that's around about 75 meters ish away from anything downwind that should give you enough time to you know fix any problems or depower and stuff with your kite so let's just quickly we're not going to go through equipment setup um the you know, that's something that you can do with your instructor, more of a hands-on feel and you can see how it all goes together. And we're also gonna to put together a sort of more in-depth video series, lots of videos explaining everything all the way up till the water start. And so if that's finished, you'll see a link in the description of this video and you can go and you know see all of those videos. Um, but for now, again, this is really just an overview prior to your first lesson. But let's just quickly talk about the kite itself very quickly. So this is a kite, and most kites, particularly if you're, if you're uh, taking your first lesson, and you know, most kites these days are what we would describe as an inflatable leading edge. So a leading edge inflatable kite. So you can see this big tube that's going around here. This is the front of the kite, uh, and basically we've pumped it up, and so it's full of air. Now, the reason that would be full of air is if we crash it out on the water, it's going to allow us to get it back up into the air and continue flying. Uh, it also helps keep a bit of integrity in the kite. You can see it sort of holds its own shape with this inflatable tube. It also has some struts. So this is called the leading edge. This is called the struts. And then this sort of flappy part is called the canopy. Now, when we're handling the kite, we sort of want to always hold it by this leading edge. This is where we can really hold and control the kite never grab it by the canopy or the struts or anything or any of the lines okay we really just want to make sure that we control it here and the best place to control it is actually in line with the center strut so the middle of the kite holding on to the big infl inflatable uh, sort of tube okay the leading edge so this is how we handle the kite this is also how we roll it over Sort of not using a kite it always sits down on the sand like this and you can see the wind sort of helps hold it down and you can also put some sand on there to help keep it in position or you can see i had my board on there as well to, to help hold it down now with that same wind direction i know it's probably a little hard to grasp with the video but the wind is still coming from here coming down this direction when we put the kite on the sand we line up this center strut with that wind direction. And what that means is that you can see it's not catching any wind, it's sitting there very nicely. If we were to accidentally put it down the wrong way, just get that sand off. Let's say we put it down like this because, because we think, oh, we're at the beach and we put it down facing to the water or something like that. You can see it's starting to catch wind and that increases the risk of it flipping down the beach. And if it was windier today, it probably would be flipping down the beach right now. So we always put the kite down, leading edge facing into the wind and the strut in line with our wind direction. So now what we might do is we'll put the kite up in the air and we'll just go through some of the basics of piloting. Okay, so now we've got the kite up in the air and basically, one of the most important things when learning kite surfing is learning your safety systems, how to get power out of the kite if something was to go wrong, how to detach yourself from the kite, 
Um, and you know that's super, super, super important. And we're not really going to cover that here, but your instructor should really go through a lot of demonstrations with you, a lot of you practicing that skill so that when the time comes, if needed, then you're ready to sort of depower the kite. But this is again, just a bit of an overview about how this whole thing works. And so what we've got here, what I'm holding onto is called a control bar. The control bar is how we steer the kite. And you might be able to see that we've got sort of four lines attaching to the kite. This is pretty typical for a kite surfing kite. They, you know, they can be two lines, they can be five lines, but typically there are sort of four lines. We've got the two outside lines attaching to the back of the kite, if you can see that. And then we've got these two front lines attaching, you know, in the center to the front of the kite. The center lines attach to our harness. So you can see I'm wearing a harness around my body and most of the weight of the kite is actually transferred down onto you know, my weight, which makes it a lot easier. A lot of people, when they're starting to you know, look into kite surfing, think, oh, you must have a lot of upper body strength. You know, you've got to hang on to this thing all the time, but that's not really the case. Most of the power is coming from that center line delivered all the way down through here to the harness. And that's where a lot of that weight comes from. On the outside lines, the two steering lines, this is how we control it. And we control it by turning the kite like this. You can see it starts to move. Now, we don't steer the kite like a car. This doesn't do anything. If you see like this, this doesn't actually change much, right? This doesn't help. What helps is actually bringing in with the elbow and slightly steering it. It's super light conditions, but this is the motion we want. Again, you'd really learn this with your trainer kite and everything first, getting used to this, but this is just the, just, you know, the overview. Now, the kite, if we just think about our wind again, it's hitting me in the face. You can see the kite sort of flying over here. And what we can do is we can slowly, just by steering with that control bar, it'll come up over our head and it'll come all the way down to the other side. Okay, so the kite's basically gone over our head like a big rainbow, imagine. We call that, you know, we, we, we sort of refer to the positions of that as you would with the hours of a clock. So all the way down here on the water would be three o'clock. Where it is about now would be about two o'clock. So sort of we're going anti-clockwise now, but this would be sort of closer to one o'clock right above our head is 12 o'clock and then we're coming back down the other side 11 sort of you know 10 all the way down and this is what would consider to be nine o'clock now everything if we remember just you know the winds at my face so that means that everything down this way is downwind if we remember that and this area is called the wind window. So basically everything through here. Now, the further down that way the kite looks, the more powerful it's gonna be. That's sort of the power zone in through there. And when we go up over our head very gently, that's sort of the front of the wind window. And that is where we're referring to the, that clock position. As we move the kite through this area, it generates a lot of power. And when we're riding, like we were talking about before, we're going to be riding from side to side, meaning that we're gonna ride sort of this way with the kite like this, riding along like that. And then we're gonna ride also this way. So on this beach, we're gonna go out into the water and then we're gonna sort of kind of come back to the water. And that's that cross onshore conditions allowing us to do that. Because we don't get to choose the direction we wanna go. The wind and the kite are gonna choose that. And what we get to do is just tack, you know, to and from across that. The one other main thing about this control bar is the fact that you may have noticed that I'm sort of bringing the bar closer to me sometimes and further away. And what that's doing is changing the angle of the kite and how much air it's sort of forcing against, it's displacement. And so the more angle, the, you know, the more force there is, the more wind that's hitting it. And so what that will do is sort of generate more power. So, you know, simply put, as we pull these back lines closer to ourselves, that generates more power. And as we push this away, that generates less power. So 
One, we're controlling our sort of power by moving the kite through the air and we're also got the control here on the bar by sort of cheating in and cheating out. Another main question that people you know, ask is like, am I gonna die? You know, you've seen the YouTube videos of getting dragged into buildings and all of this sort of stuff, but the kite technology has come along so far that there's sort of these safety mechanisms now. And so this here, and again, you'll go through this with your instructor, but if you push that away, it detaches it from this harness, meaning it's no longer attached. Okay, and I'll show that in just a moment. And then it will be connected to this leash which flags the kite out and completely depowers it. But also, the very first point for just getting rid of power in your kite is actually just to let go of the bar or sheet out. And you'll see, if I do that, you'll see the kite just basically, so if I'm holding onto the bar and then I just don't want any power, I sheet out, you'll see it basically falls out of the sky. Okay, with very little power in it now. And so that's sort of the main thing is if you're in a panic situation, what tends to happen is you like you hold on, you know, you're like, oh, something's not right and you hang on and then you're just dragging it along, it's making it worse. Whereas with a kite, you really have to just let it out. And if you've got any sailing experience, that's sort of the same as letting the sail out if you know, you've got too much wind in the sail and this is trimming it in, you know, pulling that sail in to, to grab more wind. This is getting rid of it by sheeting out. Okay, so look, I think that's that's it for a bit of a rundown, um, you know, just the basics of how this works. So hopefully that was helpful. Again, you know, hopefully you can just watch this and now when you go and have your lesson, you just think, oh yeah, I understand some of those concepts and uh, just helps you sort of move along a little bit faster. So thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you in coming videos.